Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Modern Mystics with me, Andy, and, uh, and Jesus, who's right here with me, too. And yeah, I was just, you know, it's fun with these shows because it's like I'm just in prayer all week, just as a, you know, just as a practice with the mind training. And, you know, almost never do I get any information about what I'm supposed to speak on the show until like the morning of or the, or the night before. So I was just during Ken's show, I was sitting on the toilet and <laughs> I was praying. And then I, I heard, uh, okay, unworthiness and uh, this need not be. And so, and then I remember there's a beautiful quote in that chapter, this need not be in the course about unworthiness. And, and yeah, of course, it's like, that's basically how I base the show. It's like, okay, what, what's the theme for my mind? Like, what is it for me so that I can speak to that? And, and, uh, and see what the Holy Spirit has to say to help heal whatever that seems to be that needs to be healed. And yeah, so I just thought I would speak about unworthiness today. And, and uh, if any of you have seen the movie Aquaman, it just that was a really beautiful movie about unworthiness and how he basically, Aquaman needed to accept his in inheritance and bring, uh, bring the, the under undersea, what is it, underwater Atlantis world and the earth worlds together. So kind of like bridging the gap and bringing the split mind into wholeness again. And he, he could only do that through accepting his inheritance, but he had so much unworthiness. He was like, no, he was like, no, that's not for me. And, um, you know, yeah, he just had so much unworthiness. And really the only way he could move through that is by moving towards the worthiness and what is that like how do you move towards worthiness it's all it is is following the holy spirit's prompts so you know it's like we fully have devoted ourselves to this awakening and then because of that desire then we can hear the holy spirit clearly and then we just start following his guidance and following the prompts and then by following the prompts, that's how you heal the mind. You follow the prompts, you experience miracles, and you just burn away the unworthiness. So that's why it's so important just to move towards whatever it is that the Holy Spirit has given you um, as part of His plan, as part of His guidance. And, and then, so it really is that simple. It's like, okay, follow my prompts, follow the guidance what's given me so even one example was like you know last night we came we came all together here in the studio and and um and we do some test calls and see how each other sets look utah and and here in mexico and um and i was already feeling this unworthiness because i was just moving through it like that's the theme in the mind and and we were just looking at the set in utah and something happened where I just like kind of withdrew and I withdrew and I sank more into this unworthiness. And it was like, this need not be like the prompt in the moment was actually, okay, be active, like be involved. You know, it's like, don't feed the unworthiness. Like you have to move towards whatever's given you, like follow the prompts. And what is it right now? Like, what would you have me do right now? Holy spirit. It's like, okay. So I'm part of the studio team here now. Actually, I don't know if I told everyone, but yeah, I'm part of the Mexico studio team here, which is really inspiring. And, and yeah, so when we had that meeting last night, it's like, okay, accept the means, move towards it, um, speak up, follow your prompts, and that's how you'll burn away the unworthiness. But it's like I was saying, I think on the last show, it's like when communication's held back, then it's almost like it reinforces whatever is already going on in the mind from the ego's perspective, like this unworthiness. So it's like I held back and I wasn't so involved. And then I just felt more and more unworthy. And it's like, no, it's like move towards whatever's given, communicate if you need to, follow the prompts. And then, and then the unworthiness will just burn away. And I remember it was so beautiful because um, I think like a year ago, or a long time ago or something, I was on Facebook and I saw Deanna Markin's uh, Facebook status, and it said, uh, unworthiness is a decision. 
And I was like, wow, okay. Bold statement, okay, great. Unworthiness is a decision. It didn't really land at the moment and in that moment. And so it just came to mind again today when I was praying right before the show. And, and it's like, okay, unworthiness is a decision, okay. And then what also came to mind was this chapter, uh, this need not be, which is really, it feels like it's talking about exactly that. So yeah, this is chapter four, the illusions of the ego. <laughs> Great title. And then section four, this need not be. And it's very straightforward. And I think that's why I love it so much. So it starts off saying, if you cannot hear the voice for God, it is because you do not choose to listen. That you do listen to the voice of your ego is demonstrated by your attitudes, your feelings, and your behavior. Yet this is what you want. This is what you are fighting to keep and what you are vigilant to save. So I feel like that's so important because it's like there's this video on YouTube called Desire is Prayer um, with Dave in it. And it's so beautiful because he's just saying, well, he's basically saying, you know, when you, when you pray, that's what true prayer is. It, it strengthens your desire, and it's the same as desire. But even it's like a common question is like, how do I hear the Holy Spirit's voice? Like, how do I hear the Holy Spirit's voice? Like, how do I make, discern between the Holy Spirit's voice and the ego's voice? And really, it just comes back to desire. Like, that's really all it is. Like, if you really desire to hear the Holy Spirit's voice and you really desire to hear those prompts and guidance, then you will hear it. And I just remember like um, a few years ago before I came to this community, I, I had a split desire and I talked about this a lot. You know, I was doing the business and then I was going to the gym and I wanted to have huge muscles and whatever. And, and then I remember one day, so I had been going to the gym for a while. It was like six years and near the end of it, you know, I was, so I was like reading the course more and more, watching David's videos more and more and having these mystical experiences. I'm not a body, you know, all those transcendent experiences. But then at the same time, I was going to the gym three times a week and then looking at my biceps and, you know, like doing the deadlift and all that kind of stuff. So it's like there's like, and then like trying to build this body. So there's clearly like a split in desire, you know, it's like, okay, course is saying one thing, I'm doing another thing. So it's like, there's not a full desire. So if I had asked like, why, why don't I hear the Holy Spirit that well? It's like, well, it's obvious because my desire is split. So I remember one day, um, yeah, it was like the workouts were getting more and more painful. Like I would just, I would go to the gym and then I would come home and I would be in like a lot more pain than usual. Like, you know, I was used to the sore muscles and the recovery and stuff, but it was like a lot more than usual. So I was like, and then my, yeah, pain, tight neck. And I was like, I had perfect form in the gym. So I knew it wasn't anything behavior wise that I could change. And so eventually, yeah, it just got too painful. And I was like, okay, I think the Holy Spirit's feeling for me to just stop going to the gym. And so one day I was just in the middle of the workout. And then I was just like, you know what? Like, I can't, I can't finish this workout. Like, what's the purpose? What's the point? And I was having these experiences in the gym too, where all of a sudden I was like, I was the whole gym basically. Like I would just be working out and then I would just, I would just pause. And then I would look around the gym. And then all of a sudden my mind would just fill the whole gym and like just fill everything. And I was, and I'll be like, whoa. So it was like, and then, so yeah, one day I just, middle of the workout, I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna do this. I can't do this. So. And I didn't say really in that moment, I'm quitting the gym forever, but all I knew is I need to live, leave the gym right now. And I was like, what would you have me do right now? That's what the guidance always is. So I walked out of the gym and instead I just went for a long walk. And then instantly, like following that prompt to leave the gym, miracles were flooding in like instantly. And I would just walk down this beautiful like path outside and even the gym itself was like underground it was dark you can't there's no windows you can't see outside and it's like terrible right it's like just a symbol of where my mind mind was at when I was choosing the ego and and doing that workout with that purpose and then so yeah I just walked out beautiful sunny day like this beautiful path with the trees all touching each other and and then 
yeah, I was just walking down this path and, and every person that I would walk across or like we would walk by each other, I would just look at them in the eye and just even if it was for just for a split second, it was just like this beautiful connection. Like, and then I would just hear like, see the kingdom in your brother. And then beautiful experience every time someone walked by. And then, yeah, and it was just such a miss, immediately like this mystical experience was just happening and then and then it was getting a little dark and then I was just now I was really hearing the Holy Spirit so clearly because I really had that strong desire so I could hear like okay walk down this street walk down that street and then even like even like I walked past a, a synagogue and and then when I walked past um, Jesus said turn around and walk past it again and I was like why would I do that but it's like don't question the, the guidance like I do not know what anything is for. So it's like, okay, I'll walk past it again. And then I walk past it again, and then I could see, oh, okay, I have some beliefs and judgments about synagogue and religion and, and the people there, or whatever. And I was like, the reason why I was supposed to walk by was so that I could see those thoughts clear. And then I just gave them over. It's like, okay, I want to be wrong about these beliefs. Gave them over. And so it was really like, I do not know what anything is for. And, that was just a beautiful ex example of following the guidance, following the prompts. And the prompts always lead to healing. And that's really the way you heal your mind, by following guidance, by following the Holy Spirit's voice. And that comes from having a strong desire. So, so yeah, I never went back to the gym after that day. And lo and behold, the pain started to lessen and lessen with my tight neck and whatever. And, and I didn't have to go to the chiropractor so much anymore. And, and, and it's funny because, you know, in the world, it's like, what do you mean? You're supposed to go to the gym, strengthen your muscles so that your posture gets better and, uh, and your body gets stronger so that you're in less pain. It's like, no, what leads to less pain is following the Holy Spirit's guidance. So I had nothing to do with the gym. I was just following that guidance and then the pain lessened. Yeah, because that's really what the pain is. It's like not knowing who you are. Is That's really what the pain really is. It's like, um, I never know, what's that lesson? It's like, I don't know the reason why I'm upset. It's like the first lesson. Or, yeah, it's like, you never know why really you're upset. I'm never upset for the reason I think. There we go. And so, yeah, it's just remembering that. So then just to continue, it says... Yeah, and then also it's really being honest with yourself too, because I know I've heard a lot like, well, I do want the Holy Spirit's guidance. Like, I really do. And it's like, but we really have to be really honest with ourselves. And it's like a full, it's like a lighthouse in our mind that has to make a full sweep of light all around. It's like, well, what, do I have any goals or pursuits or ambitions in the world that don't align with, the inspiration and the Holy Spirit like for the ego's purpose like for the ego's purpose of the body which is three things it's um, pain pride pleasure and attack those are like the three purposes the ego has for the body pride pleasure and attack so it's like if I'm going towards anything in the world with any of those three purposes it's like that's still the ego and then if I ask, okay, so why aren't I hearing the Holy Spirit's voice? It's because there's still a split desire. And it's like, we have to have a unified desire and have, really have like a, it says right here, a single unequivocal call. Yeah, actually this is the section before I just caught my, caught my eye. It says, I will come in response to a single unequivocal call. So it's like, yeah, that's why it's so important. It's like, okay, let me see what, what is it that I want. Like this is exercise in mysticalmindtraining.org that says um, list all your desires, you know, and then you just, you just write them all down and you clear your mind. All of your de desires, even if you think you don't want them, just write them down and it really clears the mind. It's because we don't want to hold any idols. We don't want to hold anything that's going to block the Holy Spirit's voice. Um, from reaching us and so 
Yeah, so we can just let that sink in for a second. Yeah, so it says... So it's saying the voice of your ego is what you are fighting to keep and what you are vigilant to save. Your mind is filled with schemes to save the face of your ego and you do not seek the face of Christ. The glass in which the ego seeks to see its face is dark indeed. How can it maintain the trick of its existence except with mirrors? But where you look to find yourself is up to you. And you know, it's not really to be harsh on yourself either. It's not like to start beating yourself up. It's like, oh, I don't want God, I'm terrible, and, and this and that. It's, it's really, it's like, no, it's like, it, it's, the spirit is still gentle, you know? So anytime you feel any kind of harshness in your mind, or any kind of like push, or like, I need to kill this ego, or I need to attack this ego and kill it, and, um, and, and you're just being like harsh with yourself and beating yourself up, it's remembering that actually the truth is gentle. The truth is always gentle. And the Holy, and then, yeah, the Holy Spirit is gentle. And it's only the ego that's harsh. It's like, yeah, sometimes the Holy Spirit, you know, he's firm, but he's never harsh. And there's never a justification for beating yourself up or, or like fighting, fighting against sin, like it says in the Course. There's never a justification for that. So it's also remembering that, like, while I'm reading this section. It's like, it's okay. It's like, we just need to be just honest with ourselves. but it's okay. It's like, it's like Ken, Ken Wapnick used to always say, like, you know, the, the problem is really just that we're too serious. And even in the Course, it says, you know, it was a tiny mad idea that the Son of God remembered not to laugh. It was like, really, the only seeming issue was that that thought was taken too seriously. So, so it says here, second paragraph, I have said that you cannot change your mind by changing your behavior, but I have also said, and many times, that you can change your mind. When your mood tells you that you have chosen wrongly, and this is so whenever you are not joyous, then no, this need not be. In every case you have thought wrongly about some brother God created, and are perceiving images your ego makes in a darkened glass. Think honestly what you have thought that God would not have thought, and what you have not thought that God would have you think. Search sincerely for what you have done and left undone accordingly, and then change your mind to think with God's. This may seem hard to do, but it is much easier than trying to think against it. Your mind is one with God's. Denying this and thinking otherwise has held your ego together, but has literally split your mind. As a loving brother, I am deeply concerned with your mind and urge you to follow my example as you look at yourself and at your brother and see in both the glorious creations of a glorious father. So when he says, follow my example, it's really like, it's forgiveness. You know, it's like practicing that forgiveness. As you look at yourself and at your brother, And I've spoken about this too. It's like, you know, it's like with projection. In a sense, projection is really helpful because then you can actually see what is in your mind that you have projected out. So, you know, it's like as you look at yourself and at your brother. So it's like all these beliefs that you think of yourself, maybe about body image or judgments or or whatever, or, or my nose could be better, or my lips, or whatever it could be. It's like, those are all just beliefs and judgments, and then it's the same, you know, and at your brother. It's like, everything we believe about our brother really is what we believe about ourselves 
and God. So that's why it's so important to just see, okay, what do I actually believe about my brother? And that's why the Holy Spirit will lead us to certain ones. And that's why it says, and now you will not go on alone. Mighty companions will go with you. It's like, because this is a path of relationships. And because our brother is our mirror, so it's really using that. And then it says, when you are sad, know this need not be. Depression comes from a sense of being deprived of something you want and do not have. Remember that you are deprived of nothing except by, own, by your own decisions, and then decide otherwise. So that's like the responsibility for sight section in the course. Really taking it back to my mind, like everything I experience is what I want to experience. And then remembering that also washes away like the victim identity in the mind, which is also linked in with that unworthiness actually. So it says, when you are anxious, Realize that anxiety comes from the capriciousness of the ego, and know this need not be. You can be as vigilant against the ego's dictates as for them. When you feel guilty, remember that the ego has indeed violated the laws of God, but you have not. Leave the, quote, sins of the ego to me. That is what atonement is for. But until you change your mind about those whom your ego has hurt, the atonement cannot release you. While you feel guilty, your ego is in command, because only the ego can experience guilt. This need not be. So it's even saying, like, you don't need to feel guilty. It's like, this need not be. Just follow the guidance, follow the prompts like move towards whatever you're supposed to move towards and and yeah it's like <laughs> this need not be so it's like all of this will be undone by guidance the guilt the unworthiness the anxiety the depression it says watch your mind for the temptations of the ego and do not be deceived by it it offers you nothing when you have given up this voluntary dispiriting, you will see how your mind can focus and rise above fatigue and heal. Yet you are not sufficiently vigilant against the demands of the ego to disengage yourself. This need not be. The habit of engaging with God and His creations is easily made if you actively refuse to let your mind slip away. The problem is not one of concentration. It is the belief that no one, including yourself, is worth consistent effort. Side with me consistently against this deception and do not permit this shabby belief to pull you back. The disheartened are useless to themselves and to me, but only the ego can be disheartened. Maybe we can just take a minute to let all this sink in so far. Let's see if we have any anything come to mind or any insights. I'm actually going to skip ahead to the last paragraph of this section. And it says, I do not attack your ego. I do work with your higher mind, the home of the Holy Spirit, whether you are asleep or awake, just as your ego does with your lower mind, which is its home. I am your vigilance in this because you are too confused to recognize your own hope. I am not mistaken. Your mind will elect to join with mine, 
and together we are invincible. You and your brother will yet come together in my name, and your sanity will be restored. I raise the dead by knowing that life is an eternal attribute of everything that the living God created. Why do you believe it is harder for me to inspire the dispirited or to stabilize the unstable? I do not believe that there is an order of difficulty in miracles. You do. I have called and you will answer. I understand that miracles are natural because they are expressions of love. My calling you is as natural as your answer and as inevitable. Wow, it's so beautiful. Because there's, there's like this unworthiness or whatever that seems to be in the, in the mind, but that, then it's like, this need not be. It's like unworthiness is a decision. And then it's saying, Jesus is saying, listen, like, I am your vigilance in this. I am not mistaken. And he's like, your mind will elect to join with mine, and together we are invincible. And then he's like, he's like, listen, I raised the dead. Why do you think it's harder for me to inspire the dispirited or to stabilize you if you're unstable? Like, I don't believe there's an order of difficulty in miracles, but you do. But I've called you and you will answer. So it's like, it's like, okay, I can I can agree with that. I can line up with that. And then, and then he's like, yeah, my calling you is as natural as your answer and as inevitable. So it's like, you cannot mess this up. And it's not even, it's not even on you, actually. It's all, all it is is just, you know, it's just in every moment, it's like, okay, Holy Spirit, what would you have me do? Listening and following. But then even with the listening and following, it's like, you don't even have to do it, actually. It's like, there's just a desire to listen to the Holy Spirit and then a desire to follow the instructions. But when you follow, it's not even you that does it, it's Him who does it. And it says in the Course, you know, how could it be hard to do the task that Christ has appointed you if it is He who does it? So it's literally like, that's what I need do nothing is. It's really like all we need to do is have a little will willingness. All we need is a desire to be happy. And then after that, it's like, okay, I have a desire. I really want to be happy, to be joyful. So I will listen to you and then I will follow. But it's not even at that point. It's not even the personal self. So yeah, it's just really beautiful and I'm really inspired about how simple this all is. I know Francis always talks about like, all it is is guidance, like following those prompts. So, so yeah, I think our time is just about up and thank you guys so much for joining me today and I'll see you next Sunday at whatever time this started at, 11, 11 o'clock. It was, um, what was it? 9.30. 10.30 MST. So yeah, thank you.